Welcome Pisces to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 25th of March for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. Now late last week Mars made its way into your sign. That's an absolutely fantastic development. So on the screen now I'm sharing your event chart and you can see Mars right up on your first house. That's going to give your physical vitality a big lift. If you have been feeling drained recently because of having Saturn in your sign, this is going to counteract that, not necessarily entirely, particularly when they come together, which will be between the 16th and the 14th of April. But it does give you an opportunity to get more on the front foot, so that's very welcome. Also, just to tell you that late last week, Venus in your sign, which is giving you a huge amount of extra allure, forged a very lucky link to Jupiter in your third house. Third house can be to do with tickets. I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, but if you are someone who has the budget and enjoys a little bit of a flutter, that energy is coming into the middle of this week. So that's real nice as well. So generally, Mars, Venus in your own sign despite the more limiting and sometimes doubting energy that Saturn can create, they can give you a much greater and more robust sense of yourself, your identity, and you know, just give you a, a real pep when it comes to how you judge your own appearance. Now, of course, we've got a big event as this week begins, as the moon goes opposite the sun with the penumbral lunar eclipse. So for you, you can see the moon is up in house eight, that shared finances, resources. It's also where we're most invested. The moon in house eight can be a bit nervous. But for you, of course, the sign of Libra in house eight is about trying to find a balance, uh, feeling heard, because it's the sign of communication, it's an air sign, around shared finances. But the eighth house can also be about intimacy. But if we wind back to last October the 14th, when we had the solar eclipse in Libra, that gave you an opportunity to set your intentions in a really positive way. If you want to be more entrepreneurial, if you want to buy your own property, if you want to move your resources around in a very shrewd way in terms of long-term financial planning, shares, pensions, all that kind of good stuff is the eighth house. But the eighth house is also about trans positions and transformations of course but how's it gone how's that last period of time since last october worked out for you have you seen progress around your long-term finances around your uh, earnings do you feel that your connections to others are respectful and are worthy of your devotion and investment of time and energy only you can answer that question but the lunar eclipse is really pushing you to evaluate because it occurs in terms of the sun in your second house that's your self-worth that's your everyday money that's your personal values not where you connect to someone else so if you feel the connections to someone else have been less successful since then it may be time to take back a little bit more autonomy so if you've really been trying to make a relationship work, we all know the sign of Libra, very much about relationships. And you've really been wanting the real deal because the eighth house isn't the conversation. It's really where we, we mean it. You know, it's where we're properly devoted. And if a devotion is not being respected or treated in the way you want, that could see you, this event could see you thinking very carefully about a reset. But in a more pragmatic way, it could just be about balancing the ins and outs in your finances. So the eighth house can be things that we might buy on higher purchase, or it could be a mortgage that have a longer accumulative effect on us. Whereas the second house might be our decision of what to buy in terms of our groceries, or maybe that, even that flutter in the week that you're in. So that's what you may have to evaluate. But I feel, because when that solar eclipse happened, Uranus in your third house, everyday conversation, and Neptune in your own sign, weren't forging a very good relationship to it. So it's possible you haven't got 
exactly what you hope to get. So Mars moving into your sign can give you the strength to break away from a cloying, possessive, clingy situation. It doesn't have to be romantically, it could just be a friend or a, a, a colleague at work who just always just seems to assume that you're, you've got the solutions or you're there to provide the psychological support, eighth house, to prop up how they're feeling. If something isn't working at any level, Mars arriving in your sign late last week gives you a lot more thrust to really portion off the parts of life that you want to retain complete autonomy over your agency, as they say these days. So as you come into this week, the other thing to take out from it is that Pluto in house 12 forged a very deep alliance with the sun last Thursday, the 21st, the sextile, which is really positive. With the sun in your second house, if we're thinking about your self-value, are you factoring in your ability to see into situations very psychologically? If you're only seeing a situation in terms of the material plane, which is the second and eighth houses in the practical guise, and not in the more psychological sense, that angle between Pluto and the sun at the start of this week is saying, look, you're one of the shrewdest cookies. Yes, you can give and give and give to a person or a cause or a business for a long time, but then, you know, the accumulative experience you have can then see you realize that it's not being honored or respected and you can see it. You can sometimes see it when you're doing it, but don't underestimate your psychological perceptions. Also, Neptune, your ruler, forges a very good link this week with Mercury, although that's in its pre-retrograde shadow. If you are thinking about financial matters, that encourages you to continue to tune into how things feel instinctively. Now, by the end of this week, your ruler, your traditional ruler, Jupiter, tightens up in a alliance with Uranus within three degrees. They become exact on the 21st of April and are going to be supported by Mars in your sign. It's a sensational connection because it's the first between them exactly in a conjunction for 14 years. But because Taurus is Earth and your water, Earth supports water elementally. So Mars being in your sign is going to give you the thrust to communicate your ideas Uranus, perhaps new and different ideas, with a confidence, Jupiter, that could prove to be really lucky. So, a lot of good stuff is building up at this present time. It's just assessing how the outcome from the solar eclipse plays out with this lunar eclipse. Because that's essentially down to your own personal uh, assessment. And if something isn't quite working, whether it is practically in terms of money or whether it is in terms of a deep connection sensually or sexually or emotionally only you can really decide but Mars being in your sign gives you a lot more self-belief to do what's right for you. It's been a real pleasure being with you Pisces thank you so much for joining me I do hope you have a great week and if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol.